Now I'm starting to insulate. So basically I have my one inch XPS uh, boards that I'm cutting to size to fit in between the stud walls. All the little nicks and crannies, I am filling it with some spray foam. And then all the joints on the studs, I will be applying this reflective tape. And then basically I have strapping, half inch strapping that's going across probably every two feet horizontally. And so I'm gonna add another half inch of insulation to sort of break this thermal bridge. Cause actually even when feeling with my hand, I can feel where it's nice and warm on the insulation and on the uh, stud itself, it's actually really cold. There's a huge thermal bridge right there that I want to break. Along with the spray foam, I went through all the little anomalies during factory manufacturing where there's big gaps in the floor. And so I went through and just sort of sealed all that up, trying to get this nice and watertight. So you can see I'm sort of in the middle of uh, inserting the foam on this side. And I will be keeping the vents that come with the trailer. I just think it'd be nice to have air venting if it's raining and I can't open up the roof vent. And then also it gives me the option that if I want to have, for example, heat, uh, this would, could be a very good inlet for a diesel heater. Um, so I'm gonna leave those there and I'm actually gonna cut a hole with insulation and then put the cap on with the finish, the wall finish. Uh, but yeah, it's coming uh, along pretty well and uh, got lots to do, but here we go. So a little update on the trailer. First layer of insulation on the walls, installed and taped. Today I will be doing the ceiling and possibly the front wall. Uh, so far the trailer's coming along really well. So what I'm doing right now is just cutting these little racer bits out of foam and I'm placing them, sort of wedging them between the roof beam and the uh, aluminum roof panel. So a couple reasons why I'm doing this and you know, my rationale thinking is that I think they put the piece of plywood here, A, to, to kind of structurally support the aluminum panel, but also to give it sort of a convex shape so that water sheds sort of to the sides, right? I'm just kind of enhancing that by adding these foam spacer bits so that uh, because without it, you know, there's a lot of give. Here you can see where it bows and there's actually, you know, it rained last night and there's, there's water pooling in that area. The first reason then, I guess, is to put uh, a spacer between the aluminum panel and the steel beam to, to help with that watershed. The other thing is that I know that aluminum and steel don't normally get along. They'll start to corrode each other. Uh, there'll be some vibrations here. You can even see there's some scratching already um, and some weathering. And so I'm just kind of preventing any kind of mishaps with the roof envelope. The other reason is just, uh, you know, added insulation, right? I'm adding an inch and a half insulation throughout here. This kind of just gives me like a little bit of an airspace, right? And uh, typical houses and stuff, you know, you see airspaces all the time to contribute to the overall performance of the envelope. So yeah, nothing fancy, uh, just with the insulation little spacers I've made. I am basically just slotting them in and letting them sit between the roof beam and the aluminum roofing itself. And what I actually find now is that the roof feels a lot sturdier because it has, you know, that structural rigidity now. Just finished installing all the rigid boards in the ceiling. And so now I'm just going around with some uh, foil tape to sort of seal it all up. I went in you know, all the nooks and crannies with some spray foam. Get that nice and sealed. Yeah, looking good.
All right. So today was a very productive day. <laughs> Got all the insulation in the ceiling and this back or front wall. I ran out of the foil tape, so I had some tuck tape left over. So I just used that. I think overall it turned out really well. One inch R5 in the walls. I will be adding half inch strapping and then another half inch worth of insulation. So I'll have R75 in the walls. And the ceiling, I have R75 already uh, between the studs and then I will also be adding another half inch giving me an R value of 10. And then on the front wall one and a half inch give me an R of 7.5. Uh, on the floors I will have one and a half again giving me an R of 7.5. Today I'm going to be installing insulation on the underside of my trailer and I'll be using inch and three quarter uh, just wood screws with a washer um, and hopefully that does the trick. Right now you can just see right through to the uh, plywood. So I'll be installing inch and a half uh, to the underside of the plywood here and probably spray foaming all the nooks and crannies that I can't get to. Ideally I would spray foam this but uh, that is out of my budget. I had to opt for slightly longer screws because the uh, these ones here, the inch and three quarters, they weren't making it through the insulation and had enough meat to um, get into the subfloor. And I didn't want to go too long because then obviously the screws would stick on the other side of the floor on the inside. So I had a leftover of these deck screws. They're obviously not three inch screws. Box I had in the garage. And that seemed to do the trick. You can see my washers, fasteners, I put six in. And uh, yeah, I think it turned out pretty good. It's not going anywhere. It's nice and sturdy, nice and flush to the bottom side of the floor. And then I don't know if I'm just gonna leave this exposed or not. I haven't really looked into what kind of material I can use as an underlayment, if it really matters. Obviously I don't want the insulation to get damaged from like rocks and stuff, but at the same time, you're not gonna see it. And this is uh, relatively durable stuff. Um, yeah, I'm gonna move on to do the, the rest now. See there, screws are in, nice and tidy. This is a very messy job when your trailer has been undercoated. Yeah, looking good. The, the front piece here, you can see the insulation would uh, show on the front, right? Um, you would see the inch and a half insulation there. Picked up uh, angle steel, it's uh, eighth inch by one and a half inch, and then I'm just gonna sort of place it there, paint it black, and then I'll just keep that edge of insulation hidden.
installed the angle. So now when I go to install the insulation, you won't see, you know, the pink ugly side. Just kind of nice hidden detail. I'm gonna clean up the, uh, the spray foam obviously later, but yeah. Great. Just a little FYI, don't buy this stuff. Maybe I'm just an idiot and not using this right, but I have three cans of it and I've only been able to use maybe a quarter of these two and this one here, I, it's brand new. And out of all three of them, the tips broke off or the nozzle had stopped working or something. And it is honestly the most frustrating thing because these are like 15 to $16 a bottle. Just uh, avoid these ones. The, these nozzles here just are so junky. <laughs>